Oh, thank you, Ken. Um, so that last thank you note about our Crave leaders has to be my favorite. Um, a huge thank you to all of our Crave leaders for what you guys do week in and week out. So I'd like to take a moment to introduce our leaders to you guys this morning. So Kaylin Nichols, who is here at our first service but couldn't be at our second service, she used to be in Crave when she was in high school, and last year she started volunteering. Um, so she's going into her second year of serving as a small group leader. And Katie Glady is going, also going into her second year as a small group leader. Jeff Kazmersky, who you heard from earlier, uh, he traded spots with his wife a couple of years ago, and together they've served in Crave for over five years. Chris Wise has been serving in Crave for seven years now, I believe, and Chris we really enjoy your visors. No hard feelings. <laughs> and who's left? Rachel Pieper will be moving into um, Crave this year. She's moving up with her girls from CORE, from our middle school ministry. So she is new to Crave, but not new to serving. So we're really looking forward to that. And Corey, the man, Hyvenin, is going into his eighth year of serving in Crave. So that is amazing. Thank you all, <laughs> leaders. Woo I like it. Longevity is one of the greatest strengths a team can have, and we've been blessed with that in Crave. So, Crave leaders, thank you. Um, so, in Crave and Core, which is our middle school ministry, we have a strategy from Orange that we want our high schoolers to graduate knowing and believing in so that when they graduate from high school, they don't graduate from their faith. So, here's what that strategy is as if it was coming from a high schooler. I am created to pursue an authentic relationship with my creator. I belong to Jesus Christ and define who I am by what he says. And the third one, I exist every day to demonstrate God's love to a broken world. And the fourth one that we made up here, the Crave leaders and I, I promise to come back to Crave and apologize for all the broken couches, extremely messy messes, and all the anxiety and turmoil I caused my leaders while on a mission trip in Chicago. It's very stressful. <laughs> so when you spend time with high schoolers or you work with them or you parent them, really when you spend any kind of um, time with them in any sort of capacity, I really believe that God moves us forward spiritually. And a lot of times when people describe a time when God really stretched their faith, they'll talk about when they were invited to take part in some sort of ministry or program or service. Um, it could be through participation on a mission trip or a service project or volunteering at church, but in some way, they're actively involved in something that was bigger than themselves. So maybe at first they were a little hesitant to say yes because they didn't feel qualified, or maybe it seemed like they didn't have time to commit to it, but for some reason they moved past that and accepted the opportunity to, re to serve. And as a result, not only did it affect the lives of those in that ministry or service or program, but their life changed too. So in other words, there's a direct connection in growing our faith um, and our involvement in ministry or service. So I want to take a moment and talk about that um, this morning, talk about that connection between growing and serving. So God might be using this opportunity to move all of us here today in, in a new way in order to propel our faith. So one of the best examples of this is in the Bible, and it's in Matthew chapter 14, verse 14. So if you have your Bible, you can go ahead and open up there, Matthew 14, 14. So Jesus has just gone off in a boat by himself um, because he just wanted some space and some time to just kind of get away. But even still, the crowds were waiting for Jesus, and that's where our story picks up. So hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot from the towns. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them, and he healed their sick. As evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place, and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go into the villages and buy themselves some food. So the disciples are hungry, the crowd is hungry, they're kind of in the middle of nowhere, and it is time to eat. But Jesus does something interesting here. In verse 16, Jesus replied, they do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. Jesus says, you know what? You're right, disciples. Everyone is indeed getting really hungry. I have an idea. Why don't you come up with some food and feed all of us? So maybe you felt like God was giving you this type of challenge before. 
It's that feeling that you get when you sense that someone has a need and something inside you takes notice. You feel compassion, empathy. Your heart goes out to that group or to that person. And as you're sensing the need, you feel this little nudge. And it's almost like you hear God saying, you're right. They do have a, meet, a need and you can meet it. But see, the problem is, is that sometimes most of us, most of the time, we, instead of responding to that nudge ourselves, we'll just kind of say, nah, you know what? I'll pray for the right person to come around and fill that need. I, I don't really have what it takes. I don't have the skills you know, that, that I would need to, to do something like that. And the disciples were no different than us, you guys. They did the same thing. So listen to their reply in verse 17. We have here only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. So they're saying, hey, we are not prepared. We are not equipped to meet these people's needs. You've got the wrong guys. And Jesus replies, bring them here to me, meaning the existing loaves of bread and fish. What Jesus says to his disciples is the same thing he says to us. Bring me what you have. And we answer back, but Lord, I don't have enough time. And he tells us to bring him what we have. He says to come as you are. Or we might say, God, I don't have enough talent. And he says, bring me what you have. Come as you are. But we might say, but what if they ask me hard questions? I don't know enough about the Bible. I don't have enough experience. I know I don't have enough patience. And God says, just bring me what you have. Come as you are. And that's what the disciples did. Verse 19 says, and he directed the people to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to the disciples. So imagine being there. Jesus is sitting there with this small portion of food and he breaks it into little pieces and he gives it back to you. And it appears to be only enough food for just you. So what do you do? The disciples turn around and they pass it around to people in need. So in other words, once Jesus handed them the bread and the fish, they did what they knew how to do, which is to serve people. Because you see, that's all they could do. They didn't know how to feed 5,000 people with that little bit of food. So they started with what they knew. They did know how to turn and hand out what was in their possession. The Bible says it pretty simply in verse 19, and the disciples gave them to the people. So they did what they knew how to do, trusting that Jesus would do a miracle, which is something only God can do. So what does this mean for us? It means that when we feel that kind of internal nudge, we have to put all of our excuses aside. We have to really try to stop focusing on our insecurities and excuses and decide to do one thing, what you already know how to do, and then trust our Heavenly Father to do the rest. Because that tension and that anxiety that we sometimes feel is actually a good thing because it's your faith muscle being stretched and being challenged, and that's part of the growth process that makes your faith bigger. So applying this to high schoolers, for example, let's say that your teacher mentions that her parents are an elderly couple and they're struggling to kind of keep their yard cut and maintained. And you know you cut grass as a side job and, and you are feeling this little nudge to volunteer and do it for free. You might worry about looking awkward because you don't really know them or worry about not having the money, but when you choose to take that step of faith out and serve someone else, you are trusting God with everything else. There is a place that your faith will only go once you step out of your comfort zone, take one step forward, and count on God to do the rest. So we're gonna take some time to hear from the Cravers about a time where they stepped out of their comfort zone and how they took one step forward and counted on God to do the rest. So Charlie, we'll start with you. Charlie um, is the face of Crave. I don't really know what that means. It's a thing that the Cravers do. <laughs> so Charlie, our face of Crave, you're up. Yeah, okay, that was a title passed down to me. Um, so once again, my name is Charlie and I'm a junior at Nina this year. And I grew up in the church and I don't remember coming anywhere else but New Hope. And New Hope has really become a second family for me. And I went through Connection Land and CORE, and they gave me the basic knowledge of how to be a Christian and how to act and the basic understanding of the Bible. But it wasn't until I was actually in CRAVE and I heard the messages 
where it helped to integrate it into my everyday life. So my sister was in Crave, and she would always come home talking about the fun games that they played, like flopping pancakes onto heads. And I saw some of them at past Crave Sundays, but that wasn't what got it for me. Crave, the messages in Crave were really powerful and impactful, and Crave is more than a bunch of loud high schoolers running around the church acting crazy. Crave is about finding friends with faith and then becoming their brothers and sisters in Christ. Crave is about sharing your insecurities and your fears and just being who you are. And being who you are is what the messages revolve around throughout the year. Um, I have had help through many a crisis with Crave with either a perfectly timed message from Sarah or in small group with the leaders. And the leaders here are some of the best people to come to for advice because they've gone through everything already and they know how, like what to tell you and how you can get through it. And overall, I would say Crave has helped me find who I am and then become the best version of myself. Thank you, Charlie. Hi, my name is Abby Wisniewski. I am going to be a junior at SMC. I went to New Hope from um, three-year-old preschool till eighth grade. So going into high school is quite a transition because it's the first new school I ever had. And Crave really helped me with that. They've also helped me a lot with this year because God's definitely been testing me and testing, with, testing my faith. Um, in October, I got really, really sick. I had pneumonia. I had used about 10% of my lungs, and for a little bit, the doctors didn't think I was going to make it. But even in the hospital, I could still feel Crave praying for me, and they even sent me this, a bunch of text messages, like, I hope you feel better, and they made a big poster and stuff, which was really sweet. Um, but I was, I'm healed from that, but God wasn't done there. Um, a few months later, my grandma was diagnosed with leukemia. She was in the hospital for a few months and ended up not making it, which was really hard on me and my family. But Crave prayed for me, and they really helped me realize that she's in a better place now, and it's good. Uh, then two months after that, I tore my ACL in the second game of the soccer season which was very, very painful, and I had to go through surgery and rehab, and I just got done with rehab. But through all of that, Crave always prayed for me, and they were always there for me, and I really want to thank them for that. Thanks, Abby. Okay, so I am Emily Wise. I'm going to be a freshman at Nina this year. I am... Chris's daughter, uh, blonde hair and curls might have thrown you off. <laughs> but um, because he's been serving in Crave for about seven years now, I've practically grown up with Crave and in Crave. Um, I can always remember Cravers coming to our house for campfires or scavenger hunts. Um, and I remember going to Crave senior nights, Crave cookouts, and Crave Sundays. So um, I remember distinctly two years ago sitting in those seats out there looking up at the Cravers on the stage and thinking, man, I can't wait till that's me. I can't wait till I'm in Crave because I looked up to the Cravers. They were my examples. They were who I wanted to be like. Um, so being a freshman and coming into Crave, I was sort of nervous about being accepted into the Crave community. But now, honestly, I really have no idea what I was so worried about because the Cravers accepted me in like family because seriously, that's what Crave is, a big, rambunctious, loving family. and. They know that, and they're proud of it. Um, they support each other like family. They know how to push each other's buttons like family. They bicker like family. And they show others the love of Christ like family. And 
Now, as I sit up on this stage, I'm aware that there are kids out there who now look up to me, and I just hope and pray that I can be as good of an example to them as the current and former Cravers have been and still are to me. Thank you, Emily. You nervous, Ken? <laughs> All right, so I'm Brandon. I'm gonna be a junior this year, but before I actually came to New Hope, my family and I grew up in a Catholic church, so for 11 years of my life, I was Catholic. We left the Catholic church, and for two years, we never went to church. We were looking around, trying to see, oh, what church do we want to go look at and try out next? That didn't work until we found New Hope. So the first day we were actually at New Hope, it was the opening night of Crave, which is September 13th. And if you're in high school, you should come because it's really fun. But September 13th of two years ago already, my cousin brought me. And now that she's gone, it, she made me come, kind of. But I was really nervous that first night. I enjoy it now. Crave has helped me become who I am today. Not just to pick up a Bible once a week and look at the message of God but to help me grow and learn and also become the person that I am and the person that God wants me to be. Thanks, Brandon. <laughs> Hello, everyone. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Rachel Pieper, and I'm very blessed to call New Hope my home church. I went to New Hope Christian School for elementary school, and I participated in Tender Care, Connection Land, Core, and Crave, and now I've volunteered in almost all of them. One of New Hope's strengths is building an environment for children and teens to learn about God. The reason I've come back to serve at Crave and at other places is because of the mentors and leaders that have impacted my life in a positive way. I came to Christ when I was 13 years old, and after that I had a lot of questions and I wanted to learn how to live a life of faith. Having youth leaders and friends live, to live life with really helped me to be able to stay focused on God. I'm not saying I never sinned or never strayed away. However, knowing I could go back and talk to people at church and be real with them gave me strength and comfort when going through my challenges. I'm serving in Crave to be available to my small group girls to, for them to ask the questions that they might not feel comfortable asking their parents or their teachers. I also want to be an example to them and to encourage them in their faith walks and hopefully help them to make good decisions for the rest of their lives. Thanks, Rachel. Pretty amazing that we now have two um, wonderful ladies who have gone through Crave and now have come back to serve. I like that full circle thing. Um, so Rachel, we're very glad you're going to be a part of Crave this year. So when we trust God and we are confident in Him and what we can do, we grow because we're stepping out in a way that we never have before. So let's go back to that story we were looking at in Matthew chapter 14. The story continues. They all ate and were satisfied, and the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate was about 5,000 men, besides women and children. So the disciples walked away, not in awe of themselves and what they did, but giving God credit to, for showing up and doing what only he could do. So Jesus had a pretty specific agenda in doing this miracle. Jesus was looking at more than just a hungry um, crowd of people. He wanted more than just disciples who followed directions. This was a lesson in trust. And he knew that if he had his disciples full trust in handing out the fishes and in the loaves, then they would better understand and trust him when it came to bigger things later. And the same is true for all of us. When we start trusting God in small areas by stepping out in our faith 
and serving someone else, even though it may be awkward, we are actually learning to trust God more, which helps us to prepare when we step out in faith on bigger things that God wants us to do. So here's the question, here's how we can kind of apply this today as we wrap up, is where is God nudging you? Maybe what is God urging you towards? Because the truth is, we all have plenty of excuses, right, for why we don't do what we feel nudged to do. But if I had to guess, I would say this feeling of needing to do something with what you have, maybe if it just won't go away no matter how hard you try to ignore it or suppress it, that there's more at stake there than just the opportunity to serve. The issue is our faith and that God wants to do something inside of you and inside of all of us. God wants to do something in your relationship with him. You have a role to play. You matter. You are important. You are significant. You have value. You are chosen and holy and dearly loved. And we just have to bring Jesus what we have, even though we don't have enough to feed the crowd of 5,000. We only need to trust God with what we have, and he will do what only he can do. There are tons of ways to be involved in church and in our church. And for some of us, church will just be a starting place. It'll just be a springboard. You'll find areas to, to serve in your school or your community or your career to get involved. And maybe just like talking about it makes you nervous because serving, you know, whatever opportunity for serving is a little bit outside of your comfort zone, but push through it. Try it because God wants to do something inside of you. Give it your best and see what happens. It'll be worth me. It'll be worth it. Trust me. Uh, trust God. So this is something that we all have control over. It's something that you can do in middle school. It's something you can do as a teenager. Um, and it's something that God uses for all of us to grow our faith. So as you head out today, I want to dare us to all start praying a prayer like this. Lord, please invite me out of my comfort zone. When you invite me out of my comfort zone, I'll do what I can do and trust that you will do what you can do. And then respond to his invitation to get involved. And if you do, you'll experience God in a whole new way and your faith may just begin to take off. Will you please pray with me? God, we come before you this morning, reaching out our hands, asking you to be near to us as we pray bold prayers, asking for a bigger faith. Lord, we're never too far to come back to you. All you ask of us is to come as we are and to give you what we have, and you take it from there. God, thank you for that hope. Thank you for that promise. You are so kind to us. We love you, Lord. Amen.